Hello and welcome back to the second episode of the Tower Defense game tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to actually be creating the waypoint system uh, of movement so that cubes actually move. Uh, we're at the cubes, the enemies of this game also are going to only be cubes, uh, by the way. Um, so yeah, the enemies are going to be cubes and we're going to grab some cubes and we're going to attempt to see um, by the end of this or the next episode or at some certain episode. Uh, we're gonna finish uh, having the cubes move around a some waypoints that we set. So let's jump right into that. All right. So first of all, we're gonna have to figure out exactly how we're gonna do this and what our plan is. So first of all, we're actually gonna make it so that um, the cubes' position is first of all set to uh, the first waypoint, and then it's actually gonna its position in the update function is going to be. Uh, set to move towards the next waypoint all right um and the next waypoint will be calculated so that whenever this cube touches the next waypoint its target waypoint will increase by one allowing it to go to the next waypoint and the next waypoint and the next waypoint and it just goes in that endless cycle right there so there you go that's exactly how we're gonna do it so let's get into the scripting so, um, we're gonna do is actually gonna spawn in a nice cube here. We're gonna go into cube. Uh, we're gonna put one in right here. We're gonna go to like 3D object, click on cube, place this little guy at zero, zero, and zero. There we go. Good, good stuff. We're gonna make him red. So, let's make a copy of this blue and let's make him a nice red color right here. So, let's make him a nice red color. I already have a red preset. I have lots of presets. We're gonna drag it straight to that nice and red cube here. He's gonna remain at his one in one state, uh, where he's at one one one. So we're gonna he leave that scale just like that. Except we're gonna bring him up to about 0.5. So there we go. We now have our cube here. So now let's add a component, and there's actually gonna be a, a new script, and we're gonna call this waypoint not like that waypoint path. Just like that. It's gonna be JavaScript. If you'd like to translate this entire script to C sharp, go on ahead. It is all up to you. Alright, so let's create an ad and let's open this script up. Alright, so now that we have the waypoint path script opened up right here, let's begin coding. So we're gonna add a few variables just before we actually get into the uh the start and update functions. So our first variable will be uh waypoints, so we can put in all of our waypoints. Uh, this is going to be of type game object, but it's going to be game objects with two brackets right after it because we're actually going to be making a, a game object array. Now, most people would advise against creating a game object array and uh, opt for creating a list, but to me, I prefer making an array for objects that for uh, when you're not changing anything inside of the array, it works way better for me. So just use the array. Anyway, uh, our next variable is going to be the move speed. This is going to be the move speed of the cube itself as it moves along. It's going to be a float. And uh, our final variable is going to be target waypoint. This is very important here. And this is going to be an integer. So there we go. Now at the start function, we're going to actually put in uh, the transformed opposition of this cube here. Now remember that this uh, actual script itself is inside of the cube so keep that kind of in mind while we do this so it's transformed opposition of this cube exactly will equal to waypoints uh, this nice variable up here uh, and then with two brackets we're gonna put zero zero is the first thing that we put in uh, remember that arrays are actually set up through indexes and indexes always start at zero instead of one as we're used to so there you go. So this dot transformed up uh, the cube dot transformed that position is equal to waypoints. The first one that we put in, which should be our start waypoint, uh, is dot transform dot position. So there we go. Not an actual dot after that. We finish that off with a semicolon. So all we're doing at the first is just setting the cube so its position is equal to the first waypoint or the starting waypoint. Now let's get to the fun stuff. So we're gonna make it so that. Uh, uh, the transform dot position during the update, which means uh, throughout the entire game, is going to equal to vector three dot move towards. 
So vector 3 dot move towards allows the object that you're choosing uh, to move towards something. It's kind of obvious. So that's where we're setting the actual position of the cube to. So then we're going to set it to transform. Transform dot position. And this is your starting position. Our starting position is going to be whatever the cube is. Because we've already set its starting position to this, we're all good. So it always is going to equal to that. So there we go. Once we did that, now our second one is where it's going to be going. So waypoints. And we're going to put in target waypoint. Okay, we're going to be accessing waypoints. You know how here we put waypoints zero? Well, instead of zero, we're going to put, be putting target waypoint because the waypoint that it's going to want to be traveling to is going to be changing. All right, and we're going to add dot transform dot position. And then finally, for our last thing in vector three that move towards, we're going to add in move speed. And that should be uh, just about it. Now we have move speed and be sure to multiply that uh, by time dot delta time. It's quite the long line of code, but it is all right. So there we go. That is our hugely long, pretty decently long uh, uh, line of code there. So let me recap what's happening. So in the update function, it's going to be setting up our queue. So that is equal to vector three dot move towards. So it moved towards something. This is our starting position, the uh, object itself to its new position where it should go towards is waypoints target waypoint which is going to be changing dot transform dot position it's moves and then finally it's move speed uh multiplied by time dot delta time all right so we're actually almost done we only have one more thing to do and that is the final if statement to check and add one to the target waypoint so it can actually go in between different waypoints so let's type in an if statement here so if transform dot position, so the position of the cube is equal to waypoints, is going to be target waypoint dot transform dot position. So basically, what we're doing here is we're testing whether or not the position of our cube is equal to the dis to the position of our target waypoint. Okay, and if it is, target waypoint plus plus. All this does is it increases target waypoint, uh, which is this number right here, to um, adding one to it. So now this is going to activate once again because now this has changed to another index. The object is going to move to whatever this index has changed to, and then it's going to start all over with this. It's going to test whether or not we're not that new index, and it's going to add one again until there's no longer any more waypoints in the array. So there we go. That is. That's it for this waypoint path system. So uh, let's close off this nice little button here. Um, and now waypoint path, as long as we don't have any errors, should load up here. So let's set the move speed to, I think we're gonna set it to three. That looks like a good speed. Um, our target waypoint is actually going to remain at zero. I believe we just leave that at zero. It's going to be fluctuating uh, on its own, but our target waypoint is actually gonna be zero. But actually, that is a dumb thing to do because our target waypoint should be 1. All right. So there you go. It's kind of a little bit of a trick there. Um, because our target waypoint um, should be 1 because that's the next thing we're going after since the first one is going to be 0. So you're just going to add 1 to that. So our waypoints, now we're actually just going to fill them in. So let's actually create the waypoints themselves. But before we do that, I'm actually going to make all of these cubes here and to an actual just empty game object and that's going to be holding in uh, the map and this is going to be set, let's move this empty game object to 0, 0, 0 and let's move all the cubes of the game into there and that should make, whoa, much more manageable now, very very nice so let's actually grab uh, some spheres, these are actually going to be our waypoints uh, themselves, now we're not going to be able to interact with them, we're going to disable their colliders um, we're gonna have them there. So let's decrease their scale so that they're at about uh, 0.5 uh, each one. It's gonna be 0.5. And then we're gonna lower their height so that at about 0.5 for their height. And yeah, so let's move the first starting p uh, uh, waypoint to go right here. We're gonna make it so it's off the map so you don't really see it. Um, and let's set it up to about negative 11 on that part. So then it should be at about four. 
on this part so it lines up directly with the next uh, waypoint here and then we're actually just going to change its uh, color so it's green and we'll drag in that green there and uh, let's change up green so it's actually green so I don't really like that shade of green let's make it lighter and there we go we have now set our nice waypoint here to green so let's actually set this up as an actual let's name it which is better so we can handle it in our scene so it's not called sphere it is called waypoint zero and then we're gonna put a little bit like waypoint zero slash start that's exactly what that is so that is our starting waypoint now let's create a duplicate and then this will be waypoint one and that's it now let's just drag this all the way to the corner right here and that should be at about four perfect and now that we've done this I kind of just want to test out whether or not it works uh, first of all so let's move this cube off to the side uh, we're actually going to call this enemy because for now it's actually the enemy um, let's go to the actual enemy itself um, and since we have two waypoints we're going to set the size of the waypoints to two and there we go so element zero waypoint start should be dragged to the first one and waypoint one should be dragged to the first one so just match the numbers and now that we've done that when we click on play the object just simply move towards the next waypoint and there we go now you can see that our cube moves swiftly to the next waypoint and stops at the next one because our array index here is out of range completely you can see that right there because we don't have any more uh, uh, target waypoints to go to and there isn't the next element it just stays right there and doesn't know what to do so there we go um, that is working perfectly fine so now let's set up more of these waypoints uh, while we still can let's put that at about zero right here that's waypoint two let's move down waypoint three as you can see it's automatically naming the waypoints over here uh, very nicely so let's orient these waypoints so they're nicely in the middle and luckily they all match up with like negative fours and fours uh, and good stuff like that and now let's position this at about 11 and there we go that's it we have officially set up all the waypoints so now we're gonna click on this nice enemy here and let's drag in all of the waypoints uh, oh, nope. let's click on this enemy um, and let's increase the size uh, to six right on that so element two should match with element with number two uh, waypoint three should be a match with waypoint three waypoint four with four and five with five so there we go now if we press play we should see the cube moving along uh, the waypoints so let's actually before we do that let's set it to move speed much faster so now you can see the cube is moving uh, pretty swiftly and you can see now that it's moving very nicely across the map you can see that it goes off the map and then it just gives us nope nope and then it just gives us the nice error uh, that there is no more waypoints to head to because we finally hit that last one in the index so there we go you have officially set up an entire waypoint system um, and it was actually really easy um, when I actually first started making it it was extremely easy to make I kind of made it really really quickly and I hope that you kind of understand how the waypoints work and how they're nicely set up anyways that's just what it for this episode um, in the next episode we're actually gonna be working on uh, spawning in the enemies uh, in waves like five at a time uh, in a certain amount of interval at a time and yeah we're gonna be doing that uh, in the next episode so thanks so much for watching be sure to subscribe for more content just like this and yeah Thanks so much for watching once again, and I will see you in the next video.